Hello everyone and welcome to another Oracle Hospitality Symphony POS tutorial. Today we had a request from Ruben about programming a latte button. Ruben has a revenue center where they just sell coffees and he would like to program a latte button and on the next step the employees will be prompted for the size. So we have a 12 ounce for $3, a 16 ounce for $4 and a 20 ounce latte for $5. And this is going to be a required selection and after that the employees will be prompted for other allowed modifiers such as double shots, almond milk and caramel. Now Ruben requested that this latte button would be programmed kind of like a steak where the main item is the latte and then all the other items are going to be modifiers. And I want to let you guys know that there is another way to program a coffee screen and that is using conversational ordering. Conversational ordering will require you to change the size of the drink in between the 12 and the 16 ounce even after you added the different other condiments. The downside to that is that it's extremely complicated to program and to maintain. So unless you're a Starbucks or your entire business is only serving coffee, I do not suggest using conversational ordering. It's just too complicated to program and too complex to maintain. So we're going to proceed with the simple programming where we have the main item is a latte and then everything else will be required condiments. And with that being said, let's get to programming. And we're going to start with menu item classes. So my menu item classes are programmed at the enterprise level. So I'm going to select that and then go to the configuration tab and open menu item classes. If you have yours defined at a lower level, make sure you select the accurate one. After we open menu item classes, I'm going to scroll down to the beverages area and take a look at what we have here. So I have liquor, beer, wine and non-alcoholic beverages. So I'm going to create another item for the main menu item for latte itself. So I'm going to go just below the non-alcoholic beverages. I'm going to go to this position. I'm going to use the template of my NA Bevs and call it latte. If this is going to be coffee, you can call it coffee just in case you have more than just lattes. So I'll just call it coffee. And we're going to open it up and take a look at it. So this has food tax attached to it as a sales itemizer. It is a non-alcoholic beverage and it prints on the check. So if you need this to print out a barista printer or probably at the bar, you're going to select the bar printer. And then we're going to go to the option bits just to take a quick look at it. So this is a menu item and because we used a template, most of the option bits are selected correctly. So these are the main option bits that I have. I can scroll all the way down so you can take a look at them. And we are where we are going to do some programming is going to be here in the condiment groups. So as Ruben requested, the first prompt after we select this button is going to be to require the size. So I'm going to go to the require condiments and I'm going to take one of the spots that doesn't have a name. So wherever you see a break in here, I can claim it and I will need two spots for this. So I can click the little arrow here just to use the drill down functionality and I arrive in the condiment group names and I'm going to claim two positions. So let's use number 30. So I'm going to say coffee size. That's going to be the first prompt. And I'm going to say coffee toppings or you can say coffee condiments, coffee modifiers, whatever you like. So I claim 30 and 31 and then we can close this one. Now, if we do come back here, we take a look at 30, 31. There's nothing here. So what we need to do is just click a quick refresh and now we see them. So what we're going to do is actually check the boxes for these two to be required condiments. And we're also going to check the boxes for allowed condiments. We're not going to check anything for membership. And next, I'm going to move to forced condiments and take a look at them. So for the first one, we have a minimum of one and a maximum of one. And that's what we want. Basically, the minimum will ensure that they do push one of the buttons before they move forward. And a maximum ensures that they only push one of them. Now for the toppings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a minimum of zero just in case somebody just wants a plain latte. And then I'm going to increase the maximum to probably 20. That should be plenty. So this where we have the toppings themselves, they can either not select anything or select up to 20 and that should be enough. And now we're going to save. So now that we have our coffee main item menu item class, we're going to move down and we're going to add the modifiers. So I'm going to use this area where I have mod membership and I need to create a membership for the coffee size and a membership for the coffee toppings. So they're going to be the same as these two here. So I'm going to 
hit insert it can go below this one 5023 that's fine if you want to leave a little bit of space you can just change the item here we are going to use a template and then i'm going to call this one um also going to put an m in front of it so this is a modifier membership coffee size and then click ok and then another one and this one i'm going to call it coffee toppings so we have coffee size in coffee toppings and i'm gonna fix that really quick little typo there and then we go back to the condiment groups now because we did use the pasta protein uh, membership this has membership selected for number 22 so all we have to do for the coffee toppings, we're gonna uncheck that one and we're gonna select this one. So this one is gonna be member of this condiment group. And then the coffee size, we're gonna do the same, unselect the other one and then check it for the coffee size. As far as general, what we wanna take a look at this really quick. So we have food tax, that is perfectly fine, food itemizer, and then this one prints as mods. Now, what I'm gonna do is change this one to dollar mods because regular mods does not print on the check. So I can show you by clicking this little drill down functionality how I have my print classes created. So the regular mods will be allowed to send to any order devices, but they do not print on the customer receipt and they do not print on the guest check. The dollar mods look exactly the same, but they do print on the customer check. So because we do want to see on the guest check that they ordered, for example, a 12 ounce, 16 ounce or 20 ounce, we do select the dollar mods here. Now, as far as the toppings themselves, you can choose if you want to print them on the check or not. If you have any price toppings, so for example, if you charge extra for a double shot, which most places will do, uh, you can change it here and change it to priced mods. Or if you have a combination of priced and unpriced modifiers, you can either let them all print next to the menu item, or we can override on an individual menu item level where some items do not print on the check but i do like to have all the items here and they do print on the check even if they say okay we want almond milk but they you do not charge for almond milk it doesn't matter if any of it appears on the check the customer will be just fine so now that we've designed all of the items here we can take a look also at the option bits so these are the option bits that i have selected for the memberships so number two is on because it is a condiment item and then 7 8 12 13 18 23 26 and 27 and then 38 and nothing further down all right and that's pretty much it for our menu item classes programming i'm gonna go ahead and close this and open menu item maintenance and I'm gonna click a quick search just to populate my database and I'm gonna take a look at my coffee section. So I'm using control F just to use the find feature. If you want, you can click the binoculars here, which does the same thing or control F on the keyboard. And let's go look for coffee. So I have all of my coffees here. What I can do is I can change the existing one that I have here, latte, or you can just add a new one, whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna use this one. And to change it, I'm just going to switch to the definition record. And then for the menu item class, I'm going to change the menu item class from being just a regular non-alcoholic beverage. I'm going to change it to the coffee. So that's the one that's going to ask for the two prompts. So we have our latte here. And then we're going to take a look at the price. So our latte now costs $5. And the way I'm going to price this, I'm going to set it as $3. So the 12 ounce latte costs three dollars and this is going to be the cheapest one and that's why i put my base menu item at three dollars and then for the 16 ounce and the 20 ounce what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase it by one dollar and respectively two dollars for the bigger one so now that we took care of our main menu item and then if you need to do the same for the macchiato or you know the cappuccino everything else you would change the same for all of them and now that we have these we're going to take a look at some modifiers so we're going to take a look at the required mods area. So again, I'm using my control F to find the mods. And then I have a category here for all of the different groups. So these are my required mods. So my group one is meat temp, group five is my omelet toppings and so on. 
So I'm going to scroll down and I can go back to my menu item classes and take a look at which one I chose for these guys. So these ones are number 30 and 31. So in order to keep everything nice and clean, we're going to choose number 30. So I'm going to insert a new one. And these basically these are headers here, the ones that just say group number 22 pasta protein. This is just a header and these are the actual modifiers themselves. So I'm going to add a new header and I'm going to send this one to one, two, two. This one will go to one, three, zero because that's group 30 and then zero, zero. And then this one, I'm just going to name it group 30 coffee size and then click OK. And I'm going to click no on this one. So now I have my new header here. And then I'm going to send one to number 31 as well. And this is going to be my toppings. So group number 31, coffee toppings. Great. So now we have our two headers and now we're going to have to add the modifiers themselves. So I can select one that's already here. I can use the salmon, probably not the best one to use as a template, but I don't actually have any drink required mods here to select. So I'm just going to use my salmon. So this one, um, you have to take a look here at the record number to make sure you send it correctly. So it has to go to 130001. So I'm going to go 130001. So that means it goes right underneath its header here. And then this one will be 12 ounce. And the price for it will be zero because this one will not change the price of my main item and then click OK. I'm going to answer no to this one. So now that we do have the name, I'm going to go to the definition record and make a few changes here. If take a look at the menu item class, it's still part of pasta protein. So I do have to change it to be part of coffee size. And then this does have a print class override to be a priced mod. I can actually leave it as, you know, as regular because my entire class is actually a priced mod. So I don't need to create this override. And then I'm going to click OK. And then we can double check the price really quick. So this one doesn't cost anything. That's perfect. So this is a proper template to use for the next ones. So I'm going to click insert here and then the next one will be 16 ounce. And this one will cost a dollar just to increase my price from three dollars to four dollars. And then I'm going to add also the 20 ounce. And then this one will cost two dollars. And then click OK. So now I have my size group created and I'm going to use one of these as a template and then do it for the coffee toppings as well. So I'm going to click insert, make sure we send it to 131. So it's below this one, 001. So it's right below it. And then this one will be double shot. Let's say we charge 50 cents for double shot. So this is going to be a price modifier. Click OK. And again, we're going to fix this one first before we add the other ones. So I'm going to my definition record. And instead of coffee size, this will be part of coffee toppings. Click OK and save this really quick. And now that we have the proper coffee topping here, then I'm going to add another. And this one will be almond milk. And this one I'm not going to price. We'll say that this one is for free. Click OK and add a new one, caramel, and this one will also be 50 cents. And then click OK. Now, of course, you are free to add as many toppings as you need. You'll probably have a lot more than three. Just for this example, I'm keeping these three together. And that's pretty much it on the programming. And now all we have to do is let's go to the workstation and see how this works. And here we are at the workstation. And as always, we're going to do a quick update and then go ahead and sign in. I'm going to begin a fast transaction, go to my drinks area and select coffee. So if I select my latte button, then I get prompted with the screen. So I can either select a 12 ounce. And once I've selected my size, I can add any toppings. And you can see I can select zero up to 20. So if I don't want anything, all I have to do is click done select latte. Now I have a 16 ounce. So that added a dollar here. 
And if I also want to add caramel, that's going to be 50 cents more. And finally, the 20 ounce latte with almond milk and done. So this is going to be $5 as requested. And then the almond milk is not priced. Now, I do have a checkbox for this particular menu item class where the price of the condiment gets added into the price of the parent item. So if I would print this check, I would see latte $5 and then underneath it would just say 20 ounce almond milk. And I'll show you what that condiment is right now. And we're back in EMC and this is the condiment that I was talking about, auction bit number 23. So this is part of the menu item classes in the options area. So you have option bit number 23, where if we do select this item, we will add the condiment item price to the parent menu item price. And this is up to you if you wanna see a breakdown of how they look or if you wanna have the price combined, depending on which one you prefer, either check the box or uncheck it. And that's pretty much everything that I have for you guys today. Ruben, thank you very much for your question. I hope this helps you program your latte button and your coffee screen. If you have a question or you want to propose a topic for a future video, please leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to join our free Facebook group, I'll leave a link to it at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see others like it, please leave it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.